Welcome to the NCBI Minute. You should be seeing a slide that shows some introductory stuff about the webinar. Today we're going to be talking about Smart Blast, our new uh, rapid protein identification tool. With me in the room right now is Tao Tao, who is also from Blast Help, like I am as well. He's going to manage things and answer questions when they come in through the question pod. Tom Madden, the lead Blast developer, will probably be joining us at the end, so if, if you have any questions, be sure to enter them in the question pod, and that's listed on the slide here. Uh, we're recording this webinar. It's going to be available on our YouTube channel in the webinars playlist. And if there are any answers, any questions that are you know substantive in the things that everybody would be interested in, we'll have those available on the uh, materials section that's going to be on our FTP site, and it's going to be linked to our webinars page. And the materials and slides and everything for this particular um, talk are up on our FTP site, and you can link to them using that compressed URL that's listed on this slide. So the tool that I'm going to introduce uh, today is Smart Blast. It's designed to rapidly provide a name to an unknown protein, as well as to provide some overall taxonomic context and sequence length context for the close matches to the most similar proteins in the database. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention about Smart Blast, and I'll mention it again at the end, is that it's an experimental service. We've got a new program at NCBI called PubMed Labs. Where we're putting some services out there early in their development so that we can get some feedback from people about you know, how useful they are or how they would like to see them different than the way they are right now. So I would think of it as a preliminary tool. And Tom Madden has just arrived. So if you have any questions for Tom, he's here. Before we dive into Smart Blast a little bit, I want to set some motivation for it. One of the questions that David Lippman has asked, uh, and he's our director, is what are people doing with Blast? And so if we look at what's going on with our Protein Blast service. Um, we've got about 50,000 or so Blast P searches a day. And if we look at what people are searching with, most of the queries, the sequences they search with, have very many similar sequences in the database. In fact, about 40% of the queries have exact matches in the database. And if we look at what people are doing just based on where they look on the Blast results pages, most of them are only looking at the top five matches. So that certainly suggests a particular use case for BLAST. And it's one that um, BLAST is a little bit too much for the job, if you want to think about it that way. And the use case is simply to quickly identify or assign a name to a query sequence. And basically, a full BLAST please search is not necessary. In fact, it's kind of inefficient if that's what you're trying to do. And so that's sort of the motivation for the Smart BLAST tool that I'm going to talk about right now. So Smart BLAST is particularly good at finding those close matches and giving you some context for them. And that's the URL. It's linked directly to the uh, BLAST homepage. It's also available when you run a BLAST p-search. You might see that as a link as an option for you to try. So it has a couple of things going on. One is this rapid search for close matches, and it does that in two ways. It does a BLAST p-search against a small, what I'm going to call a landmark database of reference species proteomes. You're going to get two matches back from that. I'll come back to that in just a minute. And the other one is a search against NR, the default protein database, uh, but it uses a different algorithm. It uses a rapid algorithm, a KMER algorithm, which is an alignment-free approach um, that lets you search NR very quickly uh, and generates hits to the most similar sequences. And then to make the alignments, we use BLAST-P or BLAST-2 sequences to do those. It also incorporates with the five matches that you're going to get back, a multiple alignment that incorporates your query sequence. And from that, we generate the um, Smart Blast graphical display. You're going to see a protein tree that's going to give you some taxonomic context. There's a graphical display that shows you the full length relationships among the query and, its cl and the close matches to the query. Uh, this is a slide that I stole from Tom Madden from his talk about Smart Blast. And basically, that's the procedure that I just talked about. We run that fast camera search. We run the Blast P search against the 27 proteomes. Then we use Cobalt to generate the Smart Blast display. One thing to notice on this slide is the, notice the difference in the sizes of the two databases we're searching. NR has about uh, 2.6 times 10 to the 10th residues. The reference species protein database is about 100 times smaller than that. And that's why we can use a BLAST P search there and still do it fairly quickly. Um, this is a slide that shows, also stolen from Tom Madden, but it's nice tree view of the organisms uh, whose proteomes are in this model organism database. We've got a pretty broad taxonomic spread. It's certainly not comprehensive, uh, but it does hit sort of the most important or the most popular 
organisms that are in our databases. And for all of these, we use the proteomes for the annotations that are present on the, the best assembly of that organism's genome that we have. So this is the, the heart of the smart blast display. And this is a search that I did with a translation of an open reading frame from uh, the lychee nut transcriptome. And so I can quickly take that protein sequence that's basically a novel protein sequence as far as the NCBI databases are concerned. We don't have that protein. I generated it. Uh, and I can quickly find a name for it. It's probably a DNA mismatch repair protein. And the, the name that I would want to take that from are the green matches there. Those are the reference or the landmark uh, genomes. So the Arabidopsis genome would be the one that I would probably want to grab for the name. This is the MLH1 homolog in this plant. We have a bunch of other plants, and it sets some taxonomic context. It gives me the conserved domains. Uh, you can see the things that I would expect for the MLH1 protein. And the graphical overview shows me the full-length relationships among those proteins. So there's the name where we could get from the reference database, the conserved domain results, and the multiple alignment is used to generate these graphical views that you see. We also have the traditional style BLAST report below it, so you can see it for the three hits from NR and the two hits from the Landmark database. And you also have additional hits that we've collected and saved from the Landmark and the NR database. Okay, and so I'm just going to do one example. Well, this is supposed to be a short webinar, so let's keep it that way. Uh, I'm going to go now to a web browser. And so there's the BLAST page, and you'll see that there's a link there to Smart BLAST. And if you follow that materials link, you can do this later on yourself. There's a little text file there that has some stuff in it. And there's more stuff here than we're going to do uh, for this short webinar. But what I did is I did exactly the same kind of thing that I did with that uh, lychee nut transcriptome. This is a sequence from the striped bass transcriptome that I generated by finding an open reading frame on one of the assembled RNA-seq sequences. And so in essence, this is a, an unknown protein. It's from a vertebrate, so that means that it's likely going to have lots of very close matches uh, in the NR database. And if I really just want to have a good name for this protein, I have a really good chance of finding a homolog in, say, human or zebrafish that would tell me something about what this protein is. And I also might be able to find some other fish species that have this homolog in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this as a live search. And I'm going to grab the whole sequence except for the asterisk there that represents the stop codon. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to go to the BLAST home page, and I'm going to just click on Smart BLAST here to get to it. And I can just put my protein sequence in there. And now what I want you to see, and one of the real beauty parts of this, is how quickly this happens. So this is practically um, instantaneous. And so right away, I've got a result that tells me pretty much what I need to know, that this is, if I look at my graphical view over here, I've basically got the whole thing, and it happens to be a protein that I would expect to find in any vertebrate genome. This is a cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. I can grab the name for, from the zebrafish or the human protein that's shown there. And, and it's also kind of cool because it shows me some taxonomic context for the fish species I'm working with, and in fact, gratifyingly, this works out just right because the closest protein in that tree on the left-hand side is from a fish in the same family. This is a European sea bass. These are fish in a different family, but they're all four of them are in the same uh, group of fishes. Zebra fish is in a different group of fishes, and you can see that it's a more distantly related protein. I can generate the full multiple alignment by clicking here. That opens a new tab. And so here are the five sequences, including my query, which is at the top there. Um, and this is the cobalt display, which many of you may be uh, familiar with. I can change the way this looks. Myself, I like to see the expanded view, and I like to change this to identity. This gives me some, so I can see what the differences are among these different proteins. And this is a full-blown multiple sequence alignment. So you've got the full-length appreciation of how these proteins are related to each other, which is different than what BLASTP gives you. You can, of course, generate COBOL from a BLASTP search result. This is a handy way to do this that gives you um, a nice, concise view of everything. And then down below, I have the, the five hits that I get. The two green ones here, 
which are actually the more distantly related ones. Um, these are the ones from the landmark database, and the three here are from those other fish species that uh, we saw in the tree above. And then these are additional blast hits that we saved from both the landmark database search and the KMER search against uh, NR. And of course, you have the traditional blast alignments down here if you want to see them. Okay, now the last thing I just want to mention before we close is that Smart Blast is part of the PubMed Labs feature of NCBI so that this is under rapid development and we want to hear from you. So if you click on this, please let us know what you think. That sends a feedback form to the development team and they can take your suggestions into, into consideration for making this more useful to you. Um, and I just have a couple of slides, one slide left actually, so let me go back to the slideshow. Just to mention PubMed Labs in general, if you want to know more about this, um, as I said, this, these are going to be experimental services where we're requesting input early in the development cycle. And we do have a blog. Uh, many of you may know about that blog. It's called NCBI Insights. And so there is a, a nice article there about PubMed Labs and also an article there about Smart Blast that you might find useful. And so I'm going to stop talking now. And let's see if there are any questions uh, that people have written in. And I'll leave, it, I'll leave the webinar open for a few minutes in case anybody wants to, wants to ask questions. I see one question in here that I think I can answer. So Rolanda says, what if the query sequence is much shorter? I guess he means than database sequences. What you basically see is in the graphical view, you're still going to try um, to align the whole thing, but you're going to see that it doesn't align. The parts of the other proteins that don't align with the query will be shown. So you're basically going to have a gap at the end. And uh, Cal says to tell you that insulin works fine. I'm not sure what you mean, but yeah, as a short query. Remember also that Smart Blast is not incredibly sensitive. So if you, you start using really short sequences, they're not going to give you a lot of results. I also wanted to point out there's a if you want to mess around with some of the examples that I have in there, it's not uncommon for you to put a sequence in Smart Blast and get nothing back because remember that Smart Blast is designed to find very similar sequences. There are plenty of sequences out there in the universe that have nothing similar in the NCBI databases. For those kinds of sequences, a lot of times things from metagenomes are going to have to do a full-blown BLAST-P search. So Tom, wouldn't we say that any, if anybody has any specific requests about Smart Blast, they should go ahead and use the feedback link. Use the feedback link. Yeah, yeah. Use the feedback link. If there's something that you want to request about Smart Blast, please use the feedback link and tell us about it. Yeah, so I have a question, the most distant hit that it can find. I don't quite know how to answer that. Tom's going to take a stab at this one. Okay, so, so as, as Peter was saying, Smart Blast is actually doing two different kinds of searches. One is the KMER search, which is an alignment-free algorithm. And we find that does pretty well down to about 70% or so. And so that's going to find the very close matches. And, you know, if, if you go to run a Blast P search, you're going to get a lot of stuff that's um, above 70%. The other part is a, just a standard Blast P search, and that's as sensitive as any Blast P search. So searching the whole of NR, you can go down to about 70%. Searching the 27 proteomes is kind of a standard Blast P. Right, and so those you can you can see pretty distant things there because it's, it's, quite, it's quite common that I observe that you can find things but the only matches you get are to the reference database. Yeah, so that, that would be possible. And, and I guess the idea of the reference database is, as, or as Peter calls it, the landmark, is it gives you some landmarks of proteomes that might be fairly distant from your query. So this is a question uh, about, it would be nice if the color bar showed some representation of similarity of the query to the matches, the histogram that represents the sliding window. I, again, I think that, that qualifies as a request, and write it up and send it to us. Um, and we'll take a look at it. So that way we have a record of it and we can take a look and see how feasible it is. Do, so I think Wayne's question is legitimate. So Wayne, this is a plant, because Wayne is actually one of us, but he, he wants to know, do you get an RID? And the answer is yes, you get an RID, but currently we don't have any way for you to, to save it. Yeah, so, so basically it's easier to rerun. There is an RID around, but it, I'd say just go ahead and rerun it. And we might actually just kind of change as Peter said, this is part of PubMed Labs, so things could change pretty quickly. And so we don't want to make any commitment to how we deal with the RID right now. Searches are so fast. And the only thing you can do is enter one query. So I don't think there's a whole lot of advantage to sending us an RID if you have a question about something. If they have a question, I, 
Yeah, I mean, if yeah. you just send us what your query was, you know, we can find out what happened in about 10 seconds. So. Yeah. And, of course, the question that, that someone just asked, is there a command line program, which, of course, I knew somebody was going to ask that, and the answer is no, not right now. I don't know that there are any plans to do that. Uh, no, not right now. Right, so it would be very complicated to make it into a standalone program. So I think we're going to go ahead and, and wrap it up. Uh, thank you all for coming, and we'll, you know, we got several questions here that might be worth compiling, so we'll go ahead and put those in a document. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking now. Thank you all for coming.